Hello, my name is Maggie Everett and I'm the Lead Development Officer for the Centre for Chaplaincy and Education. I'd like to welcome you to one of the first of our short videos which features some of our wonderful chaplains from around the country who, like you, have been struggling and finding ideas from other people as well as from their own imagination to support the communities with whom they normally are working face to face. We all recognise, don't we, that these are really challenging times for all of us. We hear that so often in the media it almost becomes kind of become a bit blasé with that phrase but when we're really trying to seek to bring the kingdom of god and to see god come in fullness in the communities with whom he's called us to work then finding those opportunities and those ideas can sometimes feel really challenging particularly at this time when we're even more isolated from people than we normally are so i'm going to ask my wonderful colleagues here to introduce themselves and give us a little bit of an introduction to the context in which they're working. So I'm going to hand over first to Cathy. Hi there, I'm Cathy Williams and I'm a part-time chaplain in a very large FE college in North East Wales. I spend one day a week on the agricultural site with agricultural students and I also spend time on another site where there's a sixth form. Gwen, over to you. Hello, um, I'm Gwen. I'm a chaplain at St Michael's Junior School in Twerton, which is on the edge of Bath. Uh, it's an area of uh, deprivation, um, high levels of unemployment, um, as well as addiction and, and drug abuse. Um, I've been working there six years and I'm there four days a week um, to provide the kind of day-to-day -day opportunities um, to to demonstrate the gospel in whatever way I can. Thank you, Gwen. Neil. Hello, um, so my name is Neil Wiley, originally from Scotland, now living in Bristol. I work in two secular secondary schools in North Somerset in Clevedon and Nailsey, one employed by the Diocese of Bath and Wells and one as part of an ecumenical partnership of a group of churches. Um, and I do two and a half days in each school as well as a little bit of youth work around the edges. Fantastic, thank you Neil. And finally, but by no means least, Miriam. Um, hi, so my name is Miriam Kearney and I'm a full-time non-teaching lay chaplain at the Church of England um, Academy Secondary in Wakefield. Thank you very much indeed. So what I've asked each of these wonderful chaplains to do for us is to give us two ideas. And the first idea that something that they've found to be really helpful and really um, possibly producing really good results, hopefully, um, uh, in working with staff and within their communities. So I'm going to go back to Cathy, first of all. What have you found for us, Cathy? Well, I found the simplest thing, really, um, and, and quite a basic thing, is just writing emails to staff. So I've written up quite a few emails, just some to staff who I've engaged with a lot and who I know quite well and some to staff who I've, I've had very little contact with and, and haven't really had much engagement with in the past. And it's been wonderful to see how people have responded to that. Everyone I've written to has responded. And uh, it's given me quite an insight into some of the struggles that they're having. Some of them are mm. furloughed, not many. Some of them are trying to teach courses still and manage students, tutor them, while also having children of their own at home who they're trying to educate and some of them too have elderly relatives who they're looking after. So they've been tremendous insights into their lives, which have given wonderful pointers for prayer. So I'm, I'm so glad that those relationships are growing really well during this time. That's great. Thank you. And Gwen, what how about you? I've also been uh, finding that emailing people has been um, really productive. Uh, often people face to face won't open up as much as they will mm. on an email. And uh, so I've asked um, all the staff for some specific things that they might want um, prayer for. And we've, uh, yeah, they've responded in, in, in amazing ways and really opened up. And it's been a, a privilege to be able to bring some of these issues in their own lives and in their families' lives uh, to God in prayer. That's fantastic. Thank you. Neil, how about you? Um, so similar to the two previous answers as well, but one thing I've been trying to do to lift people's spirits and, and maybe give a community feel is doing daily-ish, ish, ish uh, media recommendations on Twitter. Um, they started out quite consistently and I haven't always finished the series in time to uh, share it out, but talking about things I've watched on, on Netflix or Disney Plus, which came just in time for lockdown, as well as um, 
radio shows and things like that that I podcast that I've listened to that I found helpful or encouraging and putting them on online and tagging different people within the school. Uh, and yeah, it's, you know, I don't know how much a response is getting, but hopefully when we go back, when we go back, um, that we will be able to talk about these things as a, as a school, about things we may have enjoyed watching and be able to share that together. Great. Thank you so much, Neil. And Miriam? Um, yeah, I can't echo enough um, really what um, my colleagues have said in terms of the importance of email because it gives you a real insight into where your staff team are at and by you sending an email to them it just gives them um, that way in to respond and to let you know where they're at and what's um, lockdown like for them and something that I found was supporting staff that have young children who are still having to work and also um, maybe homeschool and support their younger children. And so I've designed some activity packs that I've sent out to staff so that they have something that they can do with their children that keeps their children occupied whilst they might be working, but also um, means that they're not using technology and having so much screen time. And I found that that's been really helpful and really well received from staff. That's brilliant. They're, they're really good. And I, and I think like you, I mean, I found certainly that email is opening up a lot of different opportunities to communicate with people that we normally wouldn't communicate with. These are the, all of you on screen with me today, which is great. So thank you for that. That's to do with staff. Now, the next thing we asked you to do was to think of um, to come up with something that you've done with students or with pupils that has actually seemed to work and be well received. Cathy, can I come back to you first, please? Yes. And this is a difficult one for me to answer because since most of my time is spent in the agricultural college, it's with students who are much more comfortable with animals than with people very often. Um, some of them still struggling with basic skills and writing emails um, is something they don't appreciate at all. Um, so keeping up an ongoing email contact with them is, is quite a challenge. But as I mentioned, I do spend a little bit of time on one of the sixth form sites as well. And we were in a situation just before lockdown where we had found two girls who were very keen to run a Christian union. And we got a lovely poster design, we had it printed, um, ready to go up and we had a program ready. And then lockdown came and everything fell apart, which was very disappointing. Um, I'm keeping in touch with those two girls. One of them writes back, one of them never does. Um, and that kind of, I suppose, summarizes where I'm at with students. It's, it's quite a struggle to keep any kind of communication going with them. But I think that's also an encouragement for the rest of us as well, because, you know, we, we often think that, oh, well, everybody else is doing so much better than me. I've got wonderful responses from students. So, so to know that people as experienced as you, Cathy, are, are still finding that a challenge is, is an encouragement itself. I know that doesn't help you necessarily, but it is at least meaning that, you know, we're not, we're not, you're not alone in that situation. So thank you for that and for your honesty. Gwen, how about you? Well, um, because I'm just based in one school, I've got the opportunity of being able to um, put on online um, for the children some ideas for them to do in worship during the week. So um, I'm suggesting some of the songs that we sing at school for them to listen to and then um, putting out there some of the ideas that we use in prayer spaces for them to engage with, to be creative with, uh, to make things and... Um, some of the children are doing that with their parents, which is fantastic because that means that uh, they're involved in worship. They might not come into school um, to share in our times of worship, but they're, they're doing that at home. And that, that's something that's um, fantastic and something that I want to build on during this time. That's great. Thank you. Really exciting, actually. What about you? Um, so in my Cleveland school, uh, the youth workers in the community and myself, all the sort of Christian youth workers have created a, an Instagram page where one of us each day runs a different thing and either sharing a, I tend to do a Bible thought on a Friday and using the story function, um, detail what we've been up to that day to, um, so last week I was, it was barbecuing day. So I showed them how to make a double bacon cheeseburgers on the barbecue and try wow. to get them to inquire about what their favorite sort of barbecue food was as food is always a way into sort of young people's hearts. Absolutely. Um, and in, in Nailsy, I, there's a, we, fundraised and built a skate park there a few years ago and it's been a huge part of the community and very close to the school community as well and when lockdown came there was far too many kids going and using the skate park all at the same time because it was gloriously sunny weather which we don't often get at that time of the year and as lockdown was approaching we were encouraging the kids to film home skate challenges so things they were doing in their house um, I started off by doing 
skateboarding tricks in my in my kitchen or in my garden and encouraging kids to post it and tag it in their um process as well and what was great we had some of our older young people sort of take the lead and do a few good ones to encourage the young people and the park very slowly started to empty um mm. and we didn't want it to be filled with sand like some skate parks across the country have been mm. great that's really creative but i know you're a very keen and avid skateboarder which uh... enthusiastic skateboarder okay all right <laughs> you've said that to me before but enthusiastic but so <laughs> But that's also a transferable thing, isn't it? Mm. Sort of things that people might be um, enjoy and be be you know, wanting to share with others. Thank you so much, uh, Miriam. Um, yes, yeah, so we've um, tried as much as possible to um, incorporate lots of the things that I do as a chaplain and as we do as a school and keep those things going to have that sense of normality for our students. And so we're trying to contact students um, daily, particularly through social media, particularly um, our school Twitter accounts with um, daily challenges. So I have five um, challenges that I set per week for students. Um, all with a different theme and um, so for example Mondays are Mindfulness Monday and it's all linked to um, activities to improve our mental health and well-being. We have Fun Friday where we do um, daft challenges and we really encourage staff and students and parents to get involved and it's mm -hmm. been wonderful to see the tweets going backwards and forwards with um, everybody getting involved in the challenges and it just makes you feel like you're um, still a community and you're still mm -hmm. part of something much bigger than what you're experiencing in lockdown at the moment moment those are fantastic they're just great ideas folks and i really appreciate that because i just i get i get really enthusiastic and just just getting a bit of a buzz more from from just what you've been sharing so thank you so much for that the final thing that i asked you to to consider would be um, an unanswered question that you have for us that um i'll lead into how we might use those unanswered questions but what unanswered question have you got kathy well it's one i've had ever since i started in chaplaincy seven years ago um, obviously, in an FE college, a state-run FE college, it's a very secular environment, and um, I have quite clearly defined professional boundaries that I'm not permitted to cross. And yet, as a Christian, I see all that the gospel offers in Jesus, mm -hmm. um, which is so much the answer to the issues uh, of the people who I'm working with, you know, as I spend time with young people and with staff. I can just see how Jesus can bring them what they really need. But I'm not allowed to say that. So the challenge to me constantly, the question constantly is, how can I point them to Jesus without being explicit and be open myself to accusations of proselytizing? Um, prayer is vital in this, and I need heavenly wisdom constantly, but that is a constant challenge in my chaplaincy role. Yeah, yes, that's very, very, very thoughtful and very helpful for those of us who may be in a more privileged position of actually having that openness so thank you for that. Gwen how about you what's your unanswered question? So I'm um, thinking about our time of lockdown um, I'm wondering what God is saying to the, the church at the moment um, but also uh, how we respond like having got used to new ways of doing things how we then uh, respond in terms of the church but also in, in our work in schools and um, can we take on some of what we're doing now and uh, build on that in the future? Um, yeah, lots of questions about that. Thank you. About you, Neil? Um, I think I've been quite challenged about how, while this is obviously such a horrible situation, in the West we're so lucky at the best of times, and especially the Western church. And when, you know, we don't have fear of death going out every day, like a lot of other countries do, a lot of Christians do. And I think, I really am challenged and hopefully that we will challenge as a church about how we see our attitude to mission and international mission and our sort of love for our brothers and sisters in other countries where, you know, them going to church is a, is a risk every single time they go. While with us, you know, obviously there are people dying in our country from this horrible illness, but for the majority of us, you know, we might just get a little bit ill. And I think it's been a real kind of, I, I can't think of the right word, but a real sort of challenge as to how lucky we are and how will we actually realise that when we come out of this and have an appreciation and, and support our brothers and sisters who don't have that in prayer and in finance and practically. Thank you. Yeah, very challenging. And last but by no means least, Miriam. 
Um, I think what I've been really challenged with is this idea of we're all in the same storm, but we're not in the same boat. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually our experience of lockdown will be very, very different to others. And um, it's that sense of how, how do we support all our students who are beautiful individuals, all our staff who are beautiful individuals, who will be experiencing this on an individual level. Um, mm -hmm. And particularly, how do we prepare for the unknown of when we go back to school? How do we support people um, as they work through their lockdown situation? Um, because for many, this is gonna have such long lasting um, impact on them. And so it's how do we prepare for something that we don't really know what it's going to look like? That would be my challenge. Yeah, thank you for that, which leads me beautifully into, I really want to thank all of you for participating this afternoon. It's been a, a real privilege um, to have you join me for this. Um, and I will continue to pray for you individually and um, for chaplains everywhere. But also um, to remind people or to let you know for the first time, we do run a, a prayer meeting every morning at 8.30, Monday through Saturday. Um, the Zoom link is on our website, Centre for Chaplaincy and Education. And also um, we're, we started last week and Cathy and Miriam would join me for that, was uh, coffee and cake at four o'clock which uh, was a great chance to meet together. As we always say, it's actually meeting real people <laughs> and having a chance to do it, not in the context of a meeting per se, but actually a chance to have a conversation. And we'll be looking at breaking into smaller groups to actually have some more meaningful dialogue and, and discuss some of those questions, I think, because I think they're, they're very real questions that many of us are, ha are having at the moment. The final thing I'd like to um, mention to you is that this is one of three initial videos that we're producing. Uh, there'll be another one with another four uh, chaplains who will join me to answer the same questions, but probably with different experiences. But also one that we're about to launch as well, which will address the how can we actually make sense of the maelstrom? Um, how can we actually steer through this storm? Whatever metaphor we're using to describe that, to try and help us frame what we're experiencing. Um, what lessons can we learn from chaplains who have been in extreme circumstances up until in, in other situations? Um, and also talking to some young people about what they would like from their chaplain in these times. So that's the other video that we're hoping to launch uh, ready for next week alongside this one. And then finally, finally into the future in the next few weeks, we're also looking at running some um, gatherings um, one of my colleagues uh, likes the word gathering rather than meeting. In this context, I think it's a really helpful one uh, where we encourage chaplains to come together to actually answer some of those questions that you've been raising this afternoon, particularly vis-a-vis -vis what is it going to look like when we move back in? What can we be saying to the church nationally? What can we be saying to church leaders? How can we be advocates for chaplaincy? Um, how can you know, we be empowered to fulfil the role that the thing that God has called us to and to really make a difference as we move and follow another load of changes to actually bring out some kind of reintegration physically uh, in face-to-face -face contact. And very finally, I know I've used finally a lot, I apologise. I, um, a friend of mine was saying this morning in a meeting, the phrase that I'm going to leave us with, but can we just remember that whatever you are doing, that God loves you and is with you and he is asking you to bring light into your communities in whatever way that is, through email, through prayer, through whatever means, to bring light, may he bring light to your darkness. And in, in doing so, may he empower you to bring light to, the, to others as well. A friend, of me told, a friend told me this today, the candle said to the darkness, I beg to differ. Mm. God bless you. <laughs>